Okay, what's up, guys? Welcome to Students of the Game. And for a long time, I haven't said this in, in a long time, but I can finally say it again. I'm back here again with my good old pal. I'm not even going to go ahead. You, you take yeah, it away, man. Well, what's up, everybody? I, I feel I feel bad. James and I were talking just before we started here about our kind of lack of contributions. But you know what? Third year university students, dissertations, coursework, coronavirus, I'm, I'm moving house, it's all happening. I'm jump starting cars these days. Um, like, you know, there's, there's, there's reason behind it. We're not just slacking off for the sake of it. Exactly, guys. You know, we got lives outside of all this type of stuff and we're taking care of it. But again, we're back here again to kind of give you a bit of entertainment while everyone's locked away and jacked. So I want to introduce what, uh, uh, what we're going to do today. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, the, the, the first point and, you know, to, to the people listening, there's a lot to talk about and there's a lot of things that we could talk about, which lots of people have gone over already. Um, how should seasons end? Um, does Liverpool deserve to have the title? Um, do teams deserve to get yeah. relegated? The transfer market, there's so much stuff we can talk about, which has already been beaten to death across the major networks. I thought what might be kind of a fun, cool idea there's no football at the moment. Fingers crossed we're still going to get that Bundesliga return. I think the first game back is Schalke Dortmund, which I'm really? buzzing for. Yeah, on May 15th, I think. Are you, um, okay, that's just a few, that's yeah. like a week away. I'll, I'll be yeah, looking I forward know. to that. I've never been such a big Bundesliga fan in my oh, life. Oh, my days. I'm, I'm going to win. I'm going to learn all the players' names. All <laughs> the players. But my idea was, and I thought it was interesting, if there was kind of a draft-style format, and you had two managers, myself and James, who would you have to draft number one overall, number two overall? We're going to do three rounds back and forth. The player to build your team around for the future, who that person's going to be. So James said it might be a fun idea to do kind of a Rochambeau, rock, paper, scissors type thing. I don't know how that's going to work over Zoom, but I guess we'll give that a go, right? You ready? Yeah, dude. Yeah. You do not. I'm a master that. Best at the three year. Okay, yeah, yeah, you count though, you count. Okay, no, let's go simultaneously, ready? Rock, paper, scissors. Wait, wait, are you going on go or after? After, after. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah, shoot, shoot, okay. Rock, Rock, paper, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Dude, I can't see your, okay, fine, all right. Okay, I'll I'll put it high, ready? There you go. Rock, rock. Paper, scissors, scissors. Shoot. shoot. Oh my days! Okay, you... okay, there's one. There's one. There's two out of three, or are we just oh, going on? No, no. Let's just go on one. Okay, okay so... I'll, I'll let you have the first match. It's gonna hurt me, but what can I do? The only reason why, and we discussed this before starting, the only reason why we wanted to do a rock paper scissors before starting the game is because I think James and I will agree on this, and we're gonna get into it. The number one pick is so painfully obvious. Um, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are reasonably close, but there is a standout who is in a tier above the rest, and that's Kylian Mbappe. So my number one pick for my draft to build a team around is Kylian Mbappe. I don't know, even know if I need to talk about this too much. I feel like it's painfully obvious, talking about the pace, um, the finishing, uh, what he's achieved at such a young age and how he's still going to get better. He's going to progress from PSG at some point, and we know he's going to wear... Barcelona colours, Real Madrid colours, Bayern Munich colours, Juventus colours, um, Manchester United, Man City, Liverpool colours, whatever. We know he's going to grace those top teams and get better and better. We know he's going to be a big part of any France, Euros teams or World Cup teams for years to come. This is a Ballon d'Or winner. You know, it's not going to shock me if this guy wins at least, you know, three, four, five Ballon d'Ors for for, for the next five, ten years of his career. So I think Mbappe really is the standout number one choice and I'm I'm sure you agree. (laughs) Um, I mean, what, what can I say? That is like the obvious pick. It's, it's not really a surprise. It hurts me because that's my guy. Yep. You know, got to let him go in this situation. Got to get better. I'm out rock, paper, scissors. But I'm, it's my turn right now. And this is a hard one because, again, you could go for the obvious Messi and Ronaldo, but you're building for the next five years. Next right. five years, I, you do expect them to have a decline, you know. Again, they are superhuman. They they could Ronaldo could be going till forty and still banging in forty goals a season. I'll say as well right now, I think the oldest player on my list is like twenty three maybe. So I've really gone kind of 
build for the future. I don't know about you, and I don't want to give too much away about the rest of the players on my list. But that's, I just, that's you know what I I just, uh, I just want to get some like names up. I, I, I just want to get some ages up, just like just to make sure because my first one is to me. One second, one second. Let me just let, let me just make sure I, I get it. Oh, he's a bit. No, no, no. He can go. He can go. He can go. So first player up for me is to me the best defender in the world and. I'm gonna say this is probably the best defender I've ever seen. Wow! As in live and as in live and flesh from the standard of from the standard of play. I can I, yep. I didn't see Maldini that much and, sure. then, and all them guys. I'm gonna go for Virgil Van Dijk. I mean, okay. what what can you say about him? Like he's I understand he is 28 years old, but I feel for defenders they can go to the round. The defenders really peak, kind of like drop off around 30, 33, 34. So I can get a good five years out of him at the top. But like Van Dijk for me is a no-brainer. Yeah, I think you know Dutch national team. Yeah, again, Liverpool best team in the you know in the, in the world now for for at least eighteen months, maybe up to coming up to about two years now. I think mm-hmm. for a lot of people, like you say, you've still got that age factor about it as well. So that's yeah. still going to be really really strong. Building from the back, I do like it. I'm always a huge fan of, you know, a centre-back or a central midfielder, um, you know, yeah. as, as your real building blocks, as your real captain. And he's not overly reliant on pace. I mean, you know, I, I wish somebody could dispute that with me. But for me, the thing that stands out are all those statistics about people not dribbling past him, you know. If you are face-to-face with Van Dyke, you're not going to try and go by him. He's too strong. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, his, his reactions are too fast. You're going to drag back. You're going to play out wider. You're going to play back to the center. You're never going to try and go through him. So I can't, I can't hate on that pick. He wasn't on my list of six, I'll yeah. tell you. Okay. But I, I rate the pick, and I, I understand where you're coming from. You know what? You've actually covered everything there about Van Dijk. What can you really say about this, like this defender? Like to have a defender come second in the Ballon d'Or vote and is saying something. And to be honest, yeah, there was a strong case for him winning the Ballon d'Or. You know. Yep. So yeah, my number one pick is Virgil Van Dijk. So my number two pick uh, is a player who's had a lot of uh, transfer speculation around him, mainly because he's playing for a slightly lesser team at the moment. But I think his time has come uh, certainly over the next, you know, either this transfer window or next transfer window to move away and um, move on to kind of bigger and better things. And my number two pick to build around for the future is uh, Kai Havertz. At, uh, oh, by- hey. So... This is a guy, and I think this is one of the picks that I can see people criticizing and being like, you've got all these players available. Why'd you pick him? He's never going to kill you with stats in terms of his goals and his assists. But all you need to do is watch him play. And he knits together the whole team beautifully. You want your poster child you know, for, you know, to, put, to put in the kit as you're selling the kit. You want the guy to shake hands with the manager. This is your guy. Um, I think Kai Havertz is... Not a no-brainer, and I do have other ones here, but I've got him ahead of some some pretty big names here. I just feel like this is a guy, if you put the right pieces around him, can develop into the best playmaker in the world. Yet again, another guy who I think is, you know, we're not going to be too shocked if he's a, a top three or a top five Ballon d'Or shortlist at some point in his career. Um, I feel like looking at him, he is to me, what a typical Germ- old Germany player was. He doesn't right. do all the glitz and glamour stuff, but just the fundamentals of the game, he has it down to a T. He's yep. a brilliant football player. Again, by minutes are sweeping all around him. It seems like that's always going to be the, the destination for him, but the yep. links of Arsenal, my, Arsenal, I look at him, Liverpool, I look at him, and generally whoever gets him is going to have a player for the next six, seven years at, like, at the very top. He's a, like, he's a very, very, very talented player. You know, yeah. it's a good pick, good pick. He wasn't actually on my list at all. No, I know. And this, I think this is what's interesting because you can take it from a number of angles. I'm not going to hate on you if you pick Messi for one of these. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, Messi five years from now, we don't know what he's going to be. We don't even know if he's going to be in a, a top five league in Europe. You know, he could have you know, retired or moved to Argentina or the US or whatever. But you can't hate on that pick just as much as you can't hate on a pick like Havertz, who's only really played for Bayer Leverkusen for his career. Fair enough. I'm, I mean, that's true. So, is it my turn now? Yep. Second round pick. Let's hear it. Oh, second round pick. Okay. I, I need to get... I, I was going to leave him to later, but I realized I might need to get him out of there because, you, cause you're, cause you've gone very, very youthful right now. And, I, right. and then I'm going to need to get him out of there because I feel like if I leave him a bit later, he'll be gone. And that's yeah. Erlen Haller. Like, what can you say about this one, the kid? He's like, on my list. He, 
we got it. We we just love to see it. What a fo- like what a football. He's literally burst on the scene. The question was it people like you have with these players. Like, can they do it at the highest level? Can they do it in Champions League? Can they do it in the Bundesliga, Premier League, and and all, and all that type of stuff? Just look at his record. Just, mm-hmm. You don't even have to look at the goals yet. Just look at his record. What in the Champions League group stages? I think he scored like what nine goals. Some, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah, he's. I mean, he he broke. I think he broke Borussia Dortmund records. That's for sure. Yeah. Like, what, did he break the Champions League record for goals in the group stage? I maybe? think. I think he did. I, I'm. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, again, Ronaldo has every record when like when it comes to that. But I, right. I, I genuinely think he did. Like what his first two games for Borussia Dortmund was scored came on scored a hat trick and two goals. Like it's you. Can't, you really with him. You can't write this stuff. Like he, no. he, he was a he, he was a player that Manchester United were really interested in, but but they didn't want to do because they wasn't sure if if he might have been worth it with the Mina Viola stuff. You look at it now, like he would have been well worth it. I think, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I think he's easy hundred million pound player. Easy at this rate, you can't buy goal scores and like now you can't get goal scores nowadays. I think, and I think what's scary about somebody like him is, you know, I think, and, and you would understand this better as a coach than, than somebody like me. I've, you know, all the coaching I've done has, has been you know, when, I was, when I was a lot younger. Um, the skill sets and attributes that he has, you can't really coach or teach. Like, no. you can't coach somebody to be that big, you know? You, like, that's just genetic. You are that big. You are that fast. You are that strong. His finishing ability and his, you know, because he scores a lot of goals that you wouldn't expect him to score. Mm. That kind of thing, you can teach maybe attacking positioning in the box to a striker, but the person who has it, like, really in their head as to what to do when somebody has a ball in a certain position, can't really teach that. That's within mm. some strikers, you know? So the areas of his game where you'd say he was lacking... I think those are things that can be coached. He's what, 19, 20? That's what, that's what makes it. And like, if I was going to compare him to a striker, I think he, he has a bit of everything, you know? And if I was looking at a striker who kind of, kind of possessed the, the same, like, same frame as him and, and like the ability set, you'd be looking like a Lewandowski type, mm-hmm. you know? And, and if he lives close, up to any... He's more explosive than Lewandowski. Basically, in, in, if he lives up to half of what Lewandowski is doing, you know, you, you're going to get a world-class striker for many years to come. Yeah, yeah I, I won't lie. He, he was on my list. Um, mm-hmm. the one thing that deterred me from putting him in, in a top three or even a top four, I think he was actually sixth on my list. Um, I do get scared sometimes because we've seen a lot of strikers kill it at Borussia Dortmund. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen Michi Batshuayi kill it at Borussia Dortmund. Paco Alcacer kill it at Borussia Dortmund. We've seen a lot of players come in, do very well, Mm. and then maybe not hit the heights that maybe you'd expect them to. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen to Haaland, but I wonder if he is going to be kind of a Piatek, you know? So the kind of player who they kind of burst onto the scene, they do really cool stuff. I know he's done it now with two teams, Mm -hmm. but is it going to fizzle out? Now, I don't think it will, but it's the one thing that scared me. Uh, I think with this is that I totally understand you with that. There there, there is always that bit of... Uh, spectacleness about it, but you look at what he's given you at 19 years of age. And if you're, if I'm, if I'm looking at it from the point of view of a football coach, you're thinking, okay, there's a 19 year old kid, six foot three, something yeah. like that, very uh, skilled, fast, yeah. very like like very skilled, technical, can drop off and play, and can also get in the box, score a passing, can score like he has everything in the locker at the yeah. same time, which is, I mean. Okay, yeah. so. I can't hate on the pick. So, so my final pick. So I've got um, I got Mbappe and Havertz uh, on on the payroll already, which I'm happy with. Now, this came down to two players for me. I do have obviously my my final guy on my list, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him out, and it really is between two players for me, and that is Lautaro Martinez um, at Inter. Uh, obviously, been oh, heavily heavily linked with Barcelona. Oh, um, and then you know and, and to me that's a, it's a faster Sergio Aguero you know that's that's the kind of guy you're looking at here and then the yeah. other one is Delict. now for me I am going to end up going with Delict. Um, I know that's a little bit of a ropey decision potentially but I've gone for two more attacking players and I want to kind of round out my draft with 
a little bit more of a defensive, a little bit more of a defensive player. Now, to everybody listening, the three players we're talking about are not going into my team, and the three players James picks aren't going into like his team. We're just talking about players that, if you had the choice, who would it be to kind of build around? For me, you got a twenty-year-old who's done incredible things in the Champions League uh, with Ajax, was captain at an age 19, 18, 19, then got his move to Juventus, where he's going to really, really learn defensive football um, under the likes of um, Chiellini. Um, and you've now got a guy who struggled this year. I won't even... Yeah, let's, know, yeah, let's not. Yeah, let's not. I still expect if Serie A returns Juventus to win the league, he'll get his medal. He'll lift the Scudetto at some point. But did he individually deserve it? I don't know. You look at how he plays against uh, certain teams. He recently this year has gone missing against the bigger teams. He didn't play that well against Roma in the 2-1 game. Um, What what was the other game he played recently? Um, He played a game recently against Fiorentina where he killed it, but it's Fiorentina. You know what I mean? All of his games where he stands out as a real, real player are usually against weaker opposition. And that's not what you want from a player who's being picked in this kind of a draft. However... He's 20 years old. We've already talked about a centre-back that you took at number one who's going to reach his peak years over the next year or so. He's kind of in that period now. Mm-hmm. That's like seven or eight years away from De Ligt. The learning, coaching, training. He loves football. Loves football. He's going to probably end up at Barcelona at some point and I just think he's only going to get better. Uh, I still maintain this guy has the potential and the skill set to be one of the best we've ever seen from the centre-back position. Up. I mean, that statement there is uh, that's a bit of a he could be one of the best. You look at the standards that has already been set from past defenders. You know, mm-hmm. there's some Even more, like, like it, exactly like I I look at um the Lichten, when he first burst onto the scene with Ajax. I think with that whole Ajax team, that fairy tale ride to um um to the to, to the semi final, which they did choke. Kind of like you remember this? They did choke. Yep. But looking at him, all the potential in the world, when you look at this certain factors around him, thinking that, uh, I'm not really sure. But it's, with football, it's a learning curve. And young players like that are going to take time to learn. They're going to make, a, they're going to make mistakes. And with him, he's probably going to make tons of mistakes before he really takes the baton and like really excels in his career. I feel like it is a maybe given time thing, but especially when you set that standard, the older you get, football has no time for anyone. No, it's you true. Know? You get kicked really out. Right. So, yeah. To me, to me, the intangibles are there. And I, I do, you know, if it was a pick for right now, I had six players on my list. So just in t- case James took three of mine, I still had my three players I was going to go with. And for me, he's probably the least talented player currently on my list of, on my list of six. But I think what could be there as a captain, as a leader, and as a defender for the future, you, you, if I, if I'm, uh, if I play in the stock markets, I'm buying stock in uh, in Matis Delict right now. Right, James, final, final pick. What have you got? Uh, final pick. Do you know what it is? I had a few ones. I, I was gonna go for Marcus Rashford because I think, we're, as a player, we've seen the development. We've seen him drop off a, a little bit and now this is, he's having his best season as a player and he just looks like someone that is physically maturing like yeah. physically and then mentally he's just getting better and better Mourinho had a question is could he play with his back or away from goal when teams really sit in and like there's no space running behind that's that's the thing that we're still waiting to see with him but as an overall talent he's a brilliant football player but I'm not yeah. going to go for him I'm sorry okay. Rashford don't worry you're, you are you actually fought you're fourth, yeah. but I'm actually going to go for Frankie De Jong. Now, he, I considered having him on my list. I did. Mm-hmm. I feel like with him, you mentioned how the Lick was a player that you believe that can be a generational talent. You know, yeah. I genuinely feel like this guy has the potential to be one of the greatest midfielders we've ever seen. Mm. Just, just look at the way he plays. Yeah. He has everything in the, like, in the locker. When he loses the ball, and when I'm watching him, I'm like, that's not real. Like, yeah. it, it, it's, like he is that good. Like, mm-hmm. he's, what, he's athletic as a 
midfielder. He can get in the box and score goals. He has range. He can dribble. He can play with his back away from um or away from goal. He has everything in the locker. He's yeah. like a Luka Modric, but a better version of Luka Modric. Bigger, stronger, more athletic. He's just. I mean, he's in, the, he's in the perfect situation too. To exactly, you know. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like him, like like him being a Barcelona, they with like with Barcelona, they're, they're waiting for that guy to come in and take the Xavi Iniesta role. This guy is Xavi Iniesta put together, and just saying, "No, oh, come like come to the world." And what can I say about him? Like I could I can wax lyricals about it. I could this kid all day long. He's yeah. He's 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 a special player. Like say, I I did consider him on my list. Uh, I do wonder if where he's playing is benefiting him. You mm-hmm. know, and you know, it, much like with Haaland, I do wonder if you know it's where he's playing that's benefiting him. Now, this can be the breeding ground though as well to make him cement himself as this top player. And I, I it's the exact same with Frankie. I I don't doubt that. He's going to learn and learn. And then if he does decide to move on, whenever that may be, he will still be the same player going forward. I don't doubt that. But I think that's one thing that just had, uh, that left me off my list. But, but like you said, what can you say? The midfield at Barcelona was getting a little tired. Uh, I, don't think, you know, I don't think anybody ever expected uh, the words, those words to come out of anybody's mouth. But you lose Xavi and Iniesta over a relatively short period of time. Busquets can't do it all by himself. Rakitic has come in, sure. Um, Sergio Roberto, I know, has kind of played more of a right back, but has also kind of slotted in occasionally. Um, and then Arta, obviously, has come in as well. But I think they needed they needed Frankie. And the moment he came in, you really did feel like you know that midfield had really kind of come together again. The thing about Frankie that like excites me and like really makes me think that oh, this guy is special is like the reason he can play, in my opinion, in any team in the world and yeah. fit in like mm-hmm. and just fit in like a glove. You know when you, you, you speak about some place in, in like you can say, oh, he might not be able to do it in Italy. He might, he, he might not be able to do it in the Premier League. Right. To go to any Premier League team. He, can, he, 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 he could come to Arsenal, Man City, Manchester United, and just fit in and be the best midfielder there. I think what's incredible about him as well, and I think the, you know, the thing that, that why I like him so much is, like you, know, you already said it, he can play in a two, he can play in a three, he can, he can do the job of a six, he can do the job of an eight. You could probably do a job of a 10 if you really wanted him to. He yeah. really is, he's versatile. Um, he's a team player, first and foremost, and you already touched on it. The defensive work rate is arguably, you know, arguably his best quality. Um, he is from that total football Ajax mentality that is why it matches so well with Barcelona. If he loses the ball, he's getting it back. And then once he has it back, he's going to make the smart play, find space again, and restart from the beginning, building an attack. Um, so for me... My honourable mentions, so James actually, and th- this is harder, this is actually harder, I think, than, than people would think. I don't think everybody's lists would be the same. But James, you actually let me have my number one, two, and three pick in my list, which I just think is kind of interesting. Um, well, I, again, I didn't let you have a buffet. I mean, no, sure. Buffet that's was, right. yeah. <laughs> you let me have my two and three. Mm-hmm. But my four and five, you took Haaland, who was, my, who was my number six, but my four and five, I already mentioned Lautaro Martinez was my number four. And then um, Jaden Sancho was my was my number five. Um, I think with Martinez, just as and you know, we'll talk about these ones very quickly. With Martinez, it, it's the it's the potential going forward. We've seen yeah. what he's done for Inter. We we know what he is. You know, you translate that into a Barcelona setting. You know, like watch out. Um, he kind of reminds me a little bit of, of of Hernan Crespo, of Aguero a little bit. But he's mm-hmm. a bit bigger, a bit stronger, a little bit faster as well. Um, mm-hmm. I know those guys were kind of more more kind of uh, jittery forwards, you know. So Aguero in particular is a little more subtle with his movement. Um, you know, you underestimate how fast he is, whereas Martinez is just is just a beast. Similar to Suarez in some ways as well. He, he, he comes into Barcelona and he's generally the missing piece. Like yeah. he has everything to play next to Messi, you know. Yeah. He can, like he can, I, I, I can whack a lyric about it. He can drop deep, like he can come short. He can do absolutely everything, you know. He can run in behind he's a goal yeah. scorer he can be a playmaker like he, he comes into Barcelona and you're going to see levels to this stuff the, the Argentina connection as well you know massive massive for that mm. and then my other player Sancho 
you you can't i think the difficulty with with me for sancho obviously i'm an englishman as well so obviously it's difficult you know sometimes it's too hard to believe that you've got a player of that quality who, who's your nationality um yet again it's the dortmund factor i i don't know what it is there's something about footballers who play for borussia dortmund who then when they leave they either really really hit or they don't at all and I think it's the breeding ground that they have there. Now, I, I fully expect Jadon Sancho, if he were to come to the Premier League, would deliver the kind of play that he's delivering now. But mm-hmm. the reason why he wasn't one of my top three is purely because I have just some doubts of his kind of play translating to other leagues. I don't have those doubts about, say, Kai Havertz or Mbappe or De Ligt going forward. So he, he was my number five. And then Haaland, for similar reasons to Sancho, was my, was my number six. Okay, uh, with mine, again, Brasford, uh, yep. he, he, um, he was my number four. Number five was Kevin De Bruyne. And in my opinion, as a midfielder, he's probably the most complete midfielder I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, he can, he, he can do everything, you know. I feel like, you must understand where like, he came from and where he is now. He started off as a winger, yeah. um, playing, like, like, playing, like, playing for Genk. And now he can play as a sitting midfielder, distributing balls, or drop in and play as, as a 10. He can also play as an 8. He can do everything, long balls if you want it, short, um, um, short passes. To me, he's the best crosser of the ball I've ever seen. I've never seen a guy first time, cook back, whatever. He's hitting the man every single time. I, I can, I kept, like, kept, like Kevin De Bruyne, if he stays in the Premier League for maybe another three more years, I, um, I could even say that he will be better. Uh, to me, as an overall package, I believe he's mm-hmm. better than your Steven Gerrard and like your yeah. Frank Lampard. But so he will, he can cement himself as arguably the best the best midfielder in the Premier League. Yeah, I, he he. I think it's one of the classic things as a football fan that you always see. You're sat in your chair, you're sat on your sofa, you're watching the game, and you have this great view because you're you're way up high. You can look down and you can go, oh, play that pass. But you're not in the headspace and you don't have the vision of the player you're kind of screaming at to play a pass. Every single time De Bruyne has the ball and I go, oh, there you go. Like just in there because you've got this like director's chair. He plays the pass outside of his foot from like crazy angles, first time without not kind of taking a touch or anything. And you just go, this guy's on a different, creatively, this guy's on a different level. Like sometimes... I believe that this, like, what, like his passes, like, just not right. There was a few passes where I feel like he has a magnet, like, on, uh, on, like, the bottom of the pitch, and like he's controlling where the pass is going to be. Because the weight of the pass is just like I'm thinking that's not right. There was one pass I think he made against Bor, like Bormer, outside of his foot, and the ball was like, yeah, like. I think I, I think I remember that because I was watching. I was what I, I was. I was having a depressed moment of no football, and I think I was watching you know, best goals of the league so far or something. And yeah, you're right. It's, it's within the six yard box mm-hmm. as well. I, I think I remember. And I, you kind of go, how's the goalkeeper not get it if it's in the six yard box, you know? And then it hits to the back post and somebody has a tap in. And, you know, you can tell as well because the players don't celebrate with the goal scorer. They celebrate with De Bruyne because they know what he's done. I, I mean, like, he can do everything. Like, I, I, I always I have, like, have this debate who, like, like who's a better passer, him or Ozil? As much as I love Mesut Ozil, yeah. like Ozil, like Ozil's mind when it comes to passing, it's just not right. Level. Yeah. Joiner does like those like those things where it should be illegal to actually try. <laughs> like, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Like, I mean, Kevin, like like Kevin and Brian, I can talk all day about it, and I'm gonna go for my number six. To be honest, I haven't really thought of it as much. There's no, okay. there's a few I'm actually gonna name right now: Trent Alexander Arnold, uh, Mo Salah. Yeah, I, I would never give it. You know my thoughts. I I like Salah. I don't want to bag on him, but I mm-hmm. he, he wouldn't be anywhere near my list for that. Sadio Mane? A little too old for me. Better than Salah by a mile, um, but a little too old for me. Trent, I just... The, the thing that hit me about Trent, there are some fullbacks who I think are just as good, um, you know, on a similar level, who are also a similar age. I look at um, Akraf Hakimi, you know, the guy on loan from Real at, at, uh, at Dortmund. Um, and I just kind of thought to myself, am I going to build my team around a fullback? I don't think so. Um, another one I can put there is Raheem Sterling. And wait, wait, before, before let's just, let's, like, let's just sort of, um, let's just debate on, on this Raphael Varane. I feel like he's someone in the past year or so, stock has dropped a little bit. 
you know, he, he's, he's kind of getting back to where he was. But just remember, he was the best defender um, in the World Cup. And people were thinking, wow, this guy's going to go on to do immense stuff. And he's kind of like dropped off since. Well, I think it's a team sport. Um, and I think Real Madrid's uh, stock dropped. So therefore, um, you know, Varane's stock dropped. I can't think of a single Real Madrid player who I think more of now than I did before the season started, you know, and that's, yeah, again, it's a reflection on, on, on the team and how they're playing. Mm -hmm. um, he's not for me right now in the stratosphere of Van Dijk. Um, and in terms of potential going forward over the next however many years, I just think De Ligt has a higher ceiling. Of course, Varane is much better than De Ligt right now, yeah. but I think the, the potential factor there, so he probably wouldn't be in my, uh, in my, in my selection there, but yeah, but interesting, interesting shout. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Did you think of goalkeepers? I thought about Donnarumma because he's still so young and he's still, you know, he's really good. Mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, do you want to build your team around a goalkeeper? Probably not. Like, no. I, I, but again, we, we, if we are talking about goal, like goalkeepers, Donnarumma is obviously one of them. Allison, like for the next few years, he's going to be up there. The Gea, you know, he's there. And yeah. to, um, to Stegen, everyone watch lyricals about him and, yeah. All black to me, who is the best goalkeeper in the world today. I mean, yeah, if you want to build around someone, it's this guy. He's playing on a different level. Um, so I think what, what I guess we'll probably do is maybe put it on Twitter or maybe even put it on YouTube or maybe people drop it in the comments. Yeah. So to summarize my draft, um, I had the luck um, of going first. So I have um, Kylian Mbappe as my first round pick. My uh, second round pick was Kai Havertz. And my third round pick was, uh, was Matis De Ligt. Yeah, um, it's probably going to be there, but... Uh, my one was Virgil van Dijk as number one. My number two was Erlen Haller. Um, uh, and uh, my number three was Frankie de Jong. But yeah, guys, let us know. Uh, let us know what you think. Is there anybody we missed? Um, James and I didn't do loads and loads of preparation for this draft. It was just mm -hmm. a quick kind of off the top of your head thing. I'm sure there's a bunch of players you could, you could consider for, for this kind of position. But that was, our, that was our take. Yeah, guys, again, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I guarantee you this. A couple of people are just going to be slitting Ireland saying you missed out him, here or there. If you guys yeah. want to have your say, comment down below. Let, um, let us know. Jack, thank you for joining me today. Really, really enjoyed it. And uh, catch you next time, Jack. Can we do a two-sweet um, through, um, through the camera? Can we do on a two-sweet? Hey, go on. <laughs>